Hey all, and welcome to the second Cyber Green Tech in 5 Minutes video. Today we're going to be covering scripting, specifically how to use the Secure Application Model. The Secure Application Model was invented by Microsoft for partners to be able to access your client ten tenants in headless scripting. That means scripting without having to log in. So let's check out exactly what we mean by that. So Microsoft has some security requirements for accessing the Partner Center or the Partner Center APIs. Number one is that all users must have multi-factor authentication enabled, even users that don't use the Partner Center or Partner Center API. Just the entire partner tenant must have multi-factor authentication enabled. Now this poses a problem because a lot of MSPs are using scripting to make sure that all of their clients' tenants are in a specific state. For example, you execute a PowerShell script every day that makes sure that everyone has mailbox auditing enabled, for example. So Microsoft figured like, hey, okay, it's unfair of us to ask you to deploy multi-factor authentication without giving you a solution for that. And that is the Secure Application Model Framework. Secure Application Model Framework um, is a method to connect to specific APIs using PowerShell, REST, whatever you'd like. Um, if you look at the page enabling the Secure Application Model Framework by Microsoft, you'll see that it's very developer-oriented. So that's a little bit complex for MSPs because MSPs are just used to not having to worry about developer stuff like .NET examples or Java sample and that kind of stuff. Most MSPs just run PowerShell scripts. Unfortunately, Microsoft hasn't really uh, envisioned that uh, on their documentation page except a very small part where they show you on, hey, this is how you potentially could connect. So what I've done is I've blogged about this some time ago on how to connect to, for example, Exchange Online when multi-factor authentication is enabled using the secure application model. Microsoft has forced CSPs and MSPs to start using it and even started revoking partnerships for users that do not have it enabled yet. So if you don't, please make sure you're MV enabled on each of your clients or each of your users inside of your own partner center tenant, which is what you need. So, the entire script, when you look at it, it's huge. It does so many things, but all it actually does is create a specific application inside of your Azure AD tenant with very specific permissions. Now, yours might look a little bit smaller because I've added a lot of application uh, permissions to my tenant, but yours might just have just Microsoft Partner Center user impersonation and the Azure Active Directory graph where it's allowed to read the entire directory. So all this application does, it impersonates the user that created it and makes sure that you're able to connect to resources using what's called SPN authentication, a service principle name, an application inside of your Azure AD tenant. So let's go take a look at my script again. So all of this complex things means it simply creates an application. Then it will ask for specific consent. If you run the script, it will give you a little pop-up saying like, hey, please log in here. That is because you need to give permissions to that application to be able to log in as your user. It does this three times, once for Exchange, once for the Microsoft Graph, and once for the Azure AD Graph, which are three different things. In the end, you'll receive a couple of IDs. You'll see them right here. This is the application ID, the application secret, the tenant ID, the refresh token, and the Exchange refresh token. Please keep those contained to your own environments. These are methods, or these are actually usernames and passwords that people would be able to use to log into your client's tenants. It's very important that you keep this secret and store them in a safe location, such as an Azure Key Vault, IT Glue, or any other documentation system, really. These tokens will allow you to connect to uh, the MSOL module, the Azure AD module, Exchange Online, the Teams, and the Teams module. Um, the, this module will this these codes will also allow you to connect to the uh, AZ modules, which are the Azure management modules. As you can see in these scripts, we enter the application ID, the application secret, the tenant ID, and the refresh token. Instead of connecting to the MSOL service and entering our username and password, we are actually entering these tokens, which are then allowing us to log in without a username and password. That's the same for each of these modules. Exchange Online has a couple of uh, extra things that need to happen. As you can see, we're currently authenticating with a very specific application ID. That is because Microsoft has set the application ID for Exchange Online, and you can't. 
When you're connecting to Exchange Online, you'll have full access in the same way that your user does. Sometimes when you're creating scripts, you're trying to, for example, change, this, change something on Teams and it's not working. That is because you must have the correct API permissions. You can use the secure application model that is created for you. Click on Add Permission and simply look for the permission you want. For example, I want to remove my Teams permissions in this case. If I do this and Add Permissions, it will save this. Remember that whenever you change your permissions or remove permissions, you have to click this button, Grant Admin Consent for your tenant. You do that, just say yes and save and continue. And from there on, it will grant the permissions for the entire secure application model and you'll be able to connect to those specific resources. On my blog, I try to keep the uh, secure application model as up to date as possible. And there's a lot of comments and information about it in the blog specifically. I'll put the link in the description below so you can try to figure this out yourself. So to recap, the secure application model is nothing but an application created in your own Azure AD tenant that is allowed to connect to all of your clients. The application copies the permissions of the user that runs it current that, that installed the application as it tries to do user impersonation. The application that we create can be uh, changed by adding permissions to it or even removing permissions from it so that you don't have to worry about uh, the specific access levels. You can even make a very granular application and give your help desk access to that and then create a more advanced one that your engineers, your second line engineers have access to. What's important about the secure application model is that it's a method to connect headless, so without having to log in. You don't have to use the secure application model for each login uh, when you're just trying to change the setting by hand, but when you want to automate stuff, you'll have to use the most secure application model. The secure application model has tokens that are valid for 90 days. You can refresh these with the same in the same blog, or the last script, you can refresh the these tokens every 90 days and store them in a safe location. Or you can use one of the later blogs, which I'll also include the link to, to automatically refresh them. And that's it. I hope you'll, you've all enjoyed this and it makes it a little bit more clear on what specifically the secure application model is, what it does, what it does not, and how you can use it to make sure that you are connecting to your client and successfully. I hope you've enjoyed this and I'll see you next time.